us about what they want to know more about and how they want to see our research going. So it's a really fun interactive role. Um, I do have a background in life sciences myself. I studied it um, at my undergraduate level. Um, and then I went ahead and did a master's in um, education. And so now I get to combine kind of both my passions, learning about science and all of the amazing research that's going on today um, with working with uh, young people and, and public audiences to share that. So um, we've got a really great presentation today. It's going to be on Mentimeter. So if you haven't used it before, there will be instructions at the beginning. Um, you'll need to go to a website and type in a code and then it will be an interactive presentation. So we'll be asking you to do lots of sort of answering questions, ranking things, showing us your opinions about different questions that we have. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we start, but I'll now hand over to Marios to introduce himself. Thank you, Erin. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to be here today. My name is Mario Stavridis. I'm a stem cell biologist, but uh, I'm not uh, here in my capacity as a, as a stem cell biologist. I'm here in my capacity as a teacher. So in the past several years, I've been uh, heavily involved in the teaching of undergraduate students in the School of Life Sciences at the University of Dundee. Uh, I've also been teaching in the medical school at the University of Dundee. My uh, Current role is uh, Associate Dean for Learning and Teaching, which means I'm formally I'm responsible for the organization of all of the courses that we offer as part of our uh, 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 suite of, uh, of undergraduate programs and postgraduate programs. So the, the, the thing that I want really to, to spend some time uh, discussing with you today is uh, how really to, uh, I want to understand your views on how to select a university, what you want to get out of university education, and perhaps in that process give you some tips about uh, things that you might not have thought that are terribly important in selecting, or perhaps while you're at university, that ultimately can make a big difference in how much benefit you get out of your university education. So the things that, generally speaking, people don't tend to talk a lot about. People talk a lot about getting good grades and getting to a good university. But what is a good university? A good university is a university that's good for you. That is it. You are the person who decides if that university is good, not the university. So I'll tell you a lot more about that uh, when when my uh, my slides come up. But uh, I'll pass on to uh, one of our graduates, actually, Romana. Uh, who is also now a student, uh, a PhD student now in our uh, university. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me here. I'm really pleased to be here. It wasn't something that I was expecting to do, but it's been a nice change to my schedule. Um, I'm a master's student at the moment. I do my master's in research in life sciences, so I spend a lot of time in the lab, um, which means I don't actually get to see a lot of people. I don't get to exercise my vocal cords a lot, so if my voice breaks a little bit, I do apologise as, as I'm going through this. Uh, so in June of 2020, this past year has been a blur, I graduated from my undergraduate in biological sciences um, in life sciences. Um, I'm now just about finishing my master's and I'll be starting my PhD in September. And for my presentation, I just want to talk to you a little bit about my experiences, some tips and tricks that I picked up going through my undergraduate, things that I think you guys might find important or you might find beneficial or fun or things that you might want to get involved in. So um, mine's probably going to be the least sort of rigorous. Um, it's going to be a bit more more sort of relaxed and loosey goosey, but we'll 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 go along and we'll see how we get on and, and we'll have a good time. Thanks. Fantastic. Now I am going to share my well, let's see here. I'm going to share my screen and introduce everybody to Mentimeter. So let me just pull that up. Let's see, is that going to work? Right, so can I ask, can people see a screen that says, where are you with a map of Scotland on it? We can, although it is a little bit on the small side. It is a little bit on the small side. I'm afraid this map, I couldn't get in any bigger, but hopefully no, the next the slide, slide would be. Oh, the, the slide whole, is the a whole, bit. The whole slide is zoomed in, uh, is, is kind of zoomed out. It's in the center of the screen. 
Let's see, can I, uh, is that any better? That is better, yes. Okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing what's going on here. Perfect, okay. So as it says at the top of the screen, uh, it invites you to go to www.menti.com. Oh, we've got a question already, I think, from Callum. If anybody would like to say anything or, or pop anything in the chat or ask anything, please do. Um, if you're unable to do this, don't worry, it's not a requirement. It's just a bit of fun, um, so you're not going to miss anything and you can still see all the results, which is uh, the important part. But yeah, if you are able to go into menti.com and use that code, I see people are already popping themselves on the map, which is fantastic. So just to see where people are calling in from. Um, Obviously, we know people are coming from all over and we have people from all over who join us in Dundee. Um, the really exciting thing about joining a university community is that you start to meet people from from literally everywhere. Um, I think at the Life Sciences Building, we have something like, oh gosh, is it 60 different countries represented? People from, from literally all across the world, um, which is just really exciting. You get to meet all sorts of folk. So it looks like we've got some clusters in Aberdeen and Edinburgh, some over in Glasgow. Somebody from <laughs> right, right out in the middle of the water, which is maybe how you're feeling today. <laughs> um, so this is really great to see where, where the spread of focus is from. Um, I myself am not even from Scotland, uh, as you might be able to tell from my accent. I am from the United States and um, I came over here about 13 years ago and joined Dundee, gosh, back in 2013. So I've lived here for eight years and I absolutely love it. Um, where is Glasgow on the map? I think it's that where you see that five button uh, popping up is probably where people are picking for Glasgow. Um, it is not a easy to read map, so don't worry if you don't get it. Uh, it's not meant to be that right, accurate. Right. It's just to give people a spread, I guess, right? Yes, yeah, uh, just a, a, a general idea. But it is really nice to see the real, real kind of spread of folk from all up and down and across the country. Really and the pharaohs, presumably? Is that what the corner one is? I, yeah, maybe. Right. Well, I'm going to move us on. We've got a couple more introduction uh, slides. So if you didn't get to do this one, we've got one another one coming up. Um, so let's see. We are curious or I am curious. What is your favorite science subject to study in school? Um, so I've put biology, physics, chemistry. I know that there are kind of breakdowns within that. There's human biology. There's even computer sciences, which I didn't add, but uh, should probably be up there. But just a, just a fun little quiz to see. Um, the interesting thing about working in life sciences and something I didn't really realize until I started working at the university is that there's a huge crossover uh, between the different science topics. So just because your favorite topic might be chemistry or physics does not mean there won't be a space for you working within life sciences because there's a huge amount of what they call interdisciplinary uh, working. So we have phys physicists who work with our biologists to create images, to create technologies. We have chemists who are essential to the drug discovery process, who research the new drugs that are being developed. So there's actually a huge amount of crossover and um, it's not just straight biology that you'll see represented. You'll see a lot of different people uh, specialisms. So it looks like biology is is coming out ahead, but physics and chemistry are making a pretty good showing as well, which is great. I don't know. What about you, Marius and Romana? Do you have a, a preference between the three? Well, biology is my favorite, obviously, although I have to say that I was best in physics than biology. Interesting. Very interesting. Biology for me. <laughs> um, I was never too fantastic at chemistry or physics. Um, actually, I got into my undergraduate through clearing because my grades in physics and chemistry weren't all that great, but there is nothing wrong with going through clearing. There is no stigma attached to it. And if I'm doing all right, then everyone should be doing all right. You 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 got you got to go to your uni, and you've done really fantastic since then. So absolutely, I um, went through clearing too. Oh really? Yeah. Oh cool. Um, I I am also a biology fan. I 
I also really enjoyed physics, but chemistry and me are not friends. <laughs> we, we don't get on very well. Um, right, let's see what our next slide is. Ah, this will be a good one. Um, so obviously science is a really relevant topic uh, for a lot of reasons, um, and a lot of the science research happening today addresses really important project uh, problems that we're facing. So what do you think personally uh, are the top challenges that science needs to address in, in today's day? I think I made it so you could select a couple, but not all of them. So we'll see which ones come, uh, come on ahead. Looks like climate change is definitely taking a lead. Quite a few of these are things that we we work on at the university and, and a lot of universities around the world will have teams dedicated to this. So if you're if you're keen and passionate about these problems, going to a university, working in a university is often a really good path. It's not the only path, but it's a good path to being able to contribute to research that is addressing these issues. Um, at Dundee, we have our plant sciences division where Ramana is at the moment um, and they work a lot on food security so working with agricultural crops to be able to make them more disease resistant make them so they don't need pesticides as much much make sure make them so they have bigger yields so they produce more food so that's a really important area of research uh, we have people working on covid within our labs we have people working on antibiotic resistant uh, microbes, so working on how do we treat microbes when they're becoming resistant to the medicines we use. Um, so there's a lot of things that we put our, our time and our efforts to. Uh, looks like we've got most of the votes coming in, so climate change definitely came ahead, but we see that global disease outbreak, food security, plastic in the ocean, all of these are really pressing issues, and they are things that are on, oh, and clean and renewable energy. These are all on life sciences dockets, places that people are, are researching right now. So we may talk a little bit about that as we go on. Uh, so thanks very much for that vote, I think. Yep, so we've got Mario. So I'll turn so, this over to you. Just let me know when you want a new slide. Thanks, thanks, Erin. So what I really wanted to to, to pick up on, I mean, I, I get a sense of, of uh, things that matter to you. From the last slide, I've seen um, things, global issues that you feel passionate about. So I would like you to give me a, presumably you're here because you're interested in going to university, right? And everybody has their own reasons for going to university. Uh, these sliders are not gonna move as you vote. I'm gonna, really, I'm gonna show you the result at the end. I don't want you to be influenced by what other people are doing. I want to see what you're thinking. And if anybody has anything to, uh, to add to this uh, and wants to speak or wants to add it in the chat, I'm more than happy to uh, to, to look at that and, and engage with you. I mean, I'll go through them as you're voting. So the, the most obvious answer, if you ask people on the street, why do people go to university is because they need to get a degree because that's the, basically that's the product, right, of the university. Uh, but actually, uh, a lot of people who are, you know, perhaps my age forget that, you know, going to university for many people is, is an opportunity to get out of Dodge, right? Get get out of home, move away from mom and dad and become their own people. It's a massive developmental stage, right? It is a massive life transition. You're moving away from home, you learn to be independent in many cases, not everybody, many people go to university who have lived independently for years, uh, meet many new people uh, and specialize in a subject that you have chosen. This is why you, what you do, you get a degree in something that you have chosen, right? And in the process of getting that degree and specializing in your, in the topic that you've chosen, one of the things that is really important that you perhaps don't realize so much until you've done it is you learn new skills. And I'm not talking about learning how to sew or play the guitar here, right? I'm talking about being an independent learning, a self-directed learner, uh, evaluating new information, uh, 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 critical thinking, uh, uh, analyzing data, um, uh, being creative, being reflective, 
uh, and in the whole process of the three, four years, however long you spend at university, like Romana, some people will not want to leave and stay forever and ever. Um, you gain life experience uh, and that allows you to figure what you want to do with your life. So some people want to go to university and they pick a subject that they like, but they don't really know what they want to do with this. They're just saying, I'm going to go and learn all of these things. And that buys me some time to figure out what I want to do with my life. That's completely reasonable. There's nothing wrong with going to university without real clear picture of why you're doing this right now. But this is important while you're at university that you make the most of your time there, not just the pause, right? And of course, there are many degrees that you would you, you could choose to do that are completely aligned to a profession. So if you want to be a dentist, you need to go to university and study dentistry. If you want to be a doctor, uh, you need to, to go to university to study medicine, nursing, uh, teaching. There's a whole bunch of professions that are aligned to specific degree titles. And if you want to arrive at that profession, so that's perhaps the opposite of number seven, right? Uh, buy time to figure stuff out. You've already figured stuff out and you want to get there as quickly as possible. So um, I've given you a quick whistle tool. There are others, obviously, but these were the, the main ones that came to my mind when I was thinking about why people might want to go to university. So now that I've talked at you for that long, I would like to reveal your answers. Erin, can you can you click on the next one and reveal? I think if you click on the next one, we should see the answers. Oh, no. Ah, there. Oh, that's interesting. So the order is very interesting. So many of you to get a degree. Um, so clearly the degree is. Well, to me, that's reassuring, right? Because that's that keeps universities in business, if you like. Uh, um, but gain life experience, that's really important. I'm, I'm very encouraged to see that. And some of you are really decided on what you want to do and you want to learn a profession. Um, I'm very interested to see that uh, the, the last ranked option here is buy time to figure stuff out, which is quite interesting because it is very different from how things were uh, years ago. So I think the world is changing and you are perhaps a little bit more uh, sort of uh, savvy about what it is you want to do. That's a very interesting set. So um, do, are you surprised by the ranking? Do you see anything here that surprises you? Are you out of kilter with the rest of the people in this meeting? Maybe. I have to say I'm I'm surprised by time to figure stuff out is down at the bottom. At least when I started my undergraduate, a lot of the people that I talked to were, were doing exactly that. They weren't quite sure what they wanted to do and going to university, at least the first year or the first two years, it was just about finding their feet and figuring out what they wanted to do. I guess the, if, if you are in that category, then you, you're choosing subjects that are, you know, a broad base that are a springboard that you allow you to switch topics. So this is something that perhaps not everybody in our, in our audience realizes that, you know, you can go to university to study one thing, but in many cases you have the option to switch partway through your studies to do something else. And if this, you know, it is something worth exploring when you're at the application stage with your chosen university to say, what are my, you know, how, how much flexibility do I get uh, uh, with regards to switching my, my, my degree? When, when, where am I locked in here? OK, so um, let's move to the next slide if we can and see see what uh, the next set of questions are. Ah, there you go. So the next question is uh, the differences of university to school. So this is something that many people uh, perhaps don't understand. And this is this is a big event that happens, right? This is what we call, you know, a major life transition moving from school to university. The expectations are different both from the academic side, the, those who are teaching you expect different things from you, but often students expect different things. For example, the amount of feedback you might expect or uh, whether somebody is going to reach out to you to check you're OK when your performance hasn't been great, as opposed to expecting you to reach out to the academic to say my performance is not what I expected it to be. I need some help. 
So there's a, a little bit of, of stuff here. So harder, more independent. Um, I think in the first instance, the first impression that I would say uh, most of our students tell us about is what, what is in the center there, more independent. I don't, th I don't really think that university is necessarily harder than school, especially in, in Scottish higher education. The first year of university is about the same level as advanced hires. So if you have done advanced hires and you enter first year, then your, your difficulty level is approximately the same. But what is very different is the style of learning. The emphasis is much less on passing the exam and much more on more information and creating, especially in the first few years, certainly in our degrees, Romana will correct me if I'm wrong, is create a framework of knowledge and concepts that you need in order to hang the rest of the knowledge that you acquire. So in the first few years at university, what we emphasize is giving you some new information and helping you connect the bits that previously have been given to you in various subjects that you've done at school uh, to one another. So by connecting all of these topics, so this talks to that and there's a connection between this and this, you create, you know, you can think of it as a, as a, as a framework, literally like a scaffold. And then you connect all of the pieces together and you're building a, a structure that we hope by the end of your second year is pretty much stable. And on this structure, you can then hang or hold on to and climb to a different level with the new knowledge that we give you. So this is partly what it is more independence here. Um, I like to see the flexibility here. Hi, hi to you too. Uh, more stress. Hmm. In some cases, but not everywhere, not everywhere. Uh, more hands on learning. Yes, certainly for a practical degree. I see Romana nodding there. More problem based learning mm, in some degrees, but not everywhere. So PBL stands for problem based learning. This is something that some universities use a lot. A lot of medical schools use it, but not everywhere. Teachers don't care as much. Mm. I, I would disagree. Uh, what is different between school and university in that respect is in your school, you have a teacher who knows you and there's 20 of you. At university, there's possibly hundreds of you in the class. The teacher cannot know everyone, right? Uh, and they're not, it's not the same teacher who teaches you all the way through. The teacher comes in and gives you, you know, a few, a few lectures or, you know, a whole, a whole module. So they don't, there isn't enough time to get to know learners independently, uh, individually. You do get that with your advisor of studies and hopefully by, by your second year, you've built a relationship with your advisor of studies that is stronger perhaps than what you would have had with your, with your, your form tutor at, uni, at, at, at school because you don't see them as much, but you are more independent. The emphasis is on you. All right, so um, I think ha the fact that high is now the biggest answer, uh, I think is a signal for us to move to the next slide. Thank you very much. So the next thing that I wanted you to rank here is your reasons for choosing a university. So obviously universities, there's a whole bunch of different metrics that allow people to rank universities, the best university for this or that or the other. I'm not a big fan of rankings. I celebrate them when they suit me, but uh, I'm being completely honest with you here, but largely rankings are not terribly good. They're not a very, very good way of, of doing things. Um, cost of living, obviously, uh, this is a, a big factor. Not everybody uh, has infinite budget. Uh, whether you can get in uh, is, is obviously important, but I don't know whether you think entry criteria is you rank it a hard university to get into is probably a better university. I don't know if you think about that. Not necessarily. Optionality, range of degrees, and uh, proximity to home, that's important for some people, being able to visit family or perhaps even stay in the same city. Um, many people are interested in what they're going to get out of their degree and they look at statistics about employability of graduates. I have to be honest with you, this often tells a lot more about the demographics of the recruited population than the university itself. Oxford and Cambridge have high employability statistics because they recruit 
from a, a specific demographic. A lot of private school students, pupils get into Oxford and Cambridge and uh, they have employability uh, sort of uh, because not necessarily because of the degree that they got, because of the connections that they have. Student life, uh, exchange opportunities, that's something that's really important. I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but in, in most universities, you have an opportunity to study abroad for a period of time. Uh, I know that Erasmus is, is now dead, but there is a new scheme that will replace it. And there are other non-Erasmus exchange opportunities that uh, you can take advantage of. Without paying fees, you can study abroad and uh, in some pretty prestigious uh, and exotic destinations as well. And of course, some people are interested in, in joining their friends. That's There's nothing wrong with that. Going somewhere where you're not completely alone, that's, that's important. Um, maybe not for all, but for a few people. Um, so very clearly, I see here that the top, the top thing that is emerging is cost of living and entry criteria. So you would presumably go to the university. You have a range of universities that you would look at. And then the one that is the hardest to get into that you can get into, you would like to. Is that how you see it? I'm not sure. That's not a very well written question, I guess. Optionality, that's an interesting one. What about your manner? What, which one of these was your uh, your top reason? Oh, my top reason when going into university was the degree itself. Um, if what I saw from the spec was what I thought I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think actually just looking at this now, the, I, I just did it on my phone as well, but whilst I was going through it, I was just thinking the way I'm answering this now isn't the way that I would have answered this five years I ago. I see. That's interesting. Yeah. So you change your um, your view as you go through it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Now, now you know better. Different, yeah, things, different things become more and less important to you as you go along. And it's it's different for each individual and you, you guys will, will figure it out as you go along. Yeah, I think the, the bottom line here is that there is no right answer. It's just what it is, right? Uh, you go for your reasons and make the most of it. I, I'm waffling on, I think, terribly long, but I, I would like to move to the next slide if I can. And I'll try. I think I'm horribly out of time. Um, I think this is my last one. So this is a... This is a chart. I would like you to pick a marker and drop it where you think. So we have two axes here. The, the horizontal axis is academic performance. So left is scraping a pass and to the right is first class. And then the in the in the vertical axis, we have the social aspect of it. So campus celebrity, if you like. So everybody on campus knows you. Uh, and on the bottom side is you never leave your room. You're a hermit. So I would like you to just put a marker where you think is the right balance with respect to getting a job. And secondly, uh, how much of it is, you know, worthwhile making it worth it? Because not everything about going to university is getting a decent job. It's important, but it's, you know, you would like to spend time at university that you think back fondly on when you when you're done. Oh, wow, these are uh, affected by gravity. Oh no, they're climbing up again. Somebody found the helium. So clearly you're all thinking that an a, a pretty strong academic performance is is important but you're not terribly um fussed about the social aspect or at least the mean value shows that you're not too fussed about the uh the social aspect although you would like to get out a bit you don't want to spend all the time in your room that's very interesting i guess this is a function of the world we live in uh, i can tell you for certain that this would not have been my answer when i was in your age but you know it is a different world. It's it's it, it truly is a very different world. Um, I what one thing that I see here that I would disagree with is 
that getting a decent job, the grade is more important than making it all worthwhile. I think, I don't think that getting a decent job depends so much on the grade that you get. I think that it, the grade has something to do with it, but there are many, many things that you might perceive as social aspects of the university that are as important in getting a decent job as academics and perhaps even more, you know, extracurricular things showing. So, for example, you might think that uh, joining a club is frivolous, right? It's a bit of exercise, a bit of fun. But actually, after four years at university, if you've joined a club and you've been the club secretary, then that can be the defining characteristic that gets you that job because your competitors who have the same grade as you haven't got that additional thing. So, for example, Romana here has been a student member of the university court. The court is the, the, the highest body in the university, right? So Romana has gained huge experience in leadership by being in this governing body of the university. And this wasn't an academic achievement. This was simply because she was interested in doing this. And her contributions are valued by the university community. So there's a lot of things that you can do while you're at university that are not necessarily grade earning, but they are enhancing your prospects of employability and making it all worthwhile at the same time. Am I right, Romana? Absolutely, absolutely. I would just think about that phrase as well, getting a decent job. Yeah. And uh, does that mean the job that you want, the job that you've always dreamed of, or is that just any job that requires you to have a degree in any subject? Yeah. Okay, so um, all right, let's let's move on. Uh, I think is that I think that was my last slide, wasn't it? Oh no, was that it? No, oh, that's that is my last slide. Uh, just a very quick one. What do you expect your instructors to be to you? The sage on the stage, the guide on the side, somebody you go to when you have troubles, somebody to coach you and give you detailed instructions on how to perform better or none of the above. Wow, very clear preference here for a guide on the side. Yeah, I I think that's probably fair. Uh, and I think it's a I think this is what most of my colleagues and I try to be. Um, occasionally we do do a bit of counseling, uh, especially for students who have problems. The coaching is much, much harder to achieve. A very, very small number of students, I think, would see the instructor as a coach. Uh, you need to make a lot of effort to get your instructor to be your coach. Uh, the emphasis is here on independent learning, as you saw in earlier slide. All right. OK, I think in the interest of time, I'm going to it's a very clear preference here. I'm going to skip to the next one, and I think that's me. Right, thank you for your time. I, I, I thought you I hope you found my uh, my waffling on useful uh, and perhaps even interesting. Happy to answer questions in the chat. Erin, are we doing questions or shall, shall I just plod along? Um, I think we'll probably, yeah, if you want to drop questions in the chat, I'll kind of pick them out and we can look at them at the end. But if you want to crack on with yours, that sounds like a good, good plan. OK, perfect. Um, thank you so much for, for, for having me here again and um, in my section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a little bit of a whistle stop tour of some of the things that you can expect and some tips for making the most out of your time as an undergraduate and the sort of doors that it might open for you. So I'm going to talk at you for most of this um, as I can't see you. So at the end, if you have any questions, if you want me to clarify anything, we can do that as as Erin said. Um, could you go on to the next slide, please? So just to give you a quick intro about me and what I do, I'm currently coming up to the end of my master's in life sciences. Uh, when I'm not taking selfies in the glass house, I study the molecular interactions between plants. So these are crops that we eat, so wheat, barley, tomatoes, spinach, any sort of consumable crop. 
and the microbes are in their environment. So as you may know, some of these microbes are beneficial. They can help the plants grow, but some are also pathogenic. And what we want to do is understand the interactions that are happening between these organisms. And in so doing, we can help to grow plants that are, are higher yielding or more nutritious. Um, and as we sort of saw in, in, in the little pie chart at the beginning, this is all about food security and food for the growing population, which I was really interested to see was one of the more higher ranked um, things that, that you guys picked out, because at least when I started off at university, plant sciences and agriculture wasn't something that a lot of my fellow students thought was very important. They were more sort of concerned about, you know, the molecular side, things like neuroscience and pharmacology, of course, are incredibly important, but it's 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 interesting to see how this sort of balance has, has changed. Erin, um, if you could go on to the next one. Uh, but before I was here, I was where you guys where you guys were. So in 2015, I was sat exactly where you are, um, minus the pandemic, uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do at university, where I wanted to go. Um, when I got to Dundee, I'd moved up from Manchester, so five hours away from home. I was fresh faced, ready to learn, to meet new people. Um, and so what I'm going to do over the next few slides, I'm going to take you through some of the opportunities that will be available to you. Some of the things that I got involved in that benefited me and have helped me to get to the stage I am today, which is starting a PhD in September, which is a crazy thought. Uh, next slide. Thank you very much. Uh, so first, a quick question. If you guys just go onto the chat, um, just on Teams, um, I want you to type and share which of these you think is most important or will be most important as you go through your undergraduate. Is it academic work? Is it extra, extracurricular activities or is it your personal life? And if you don't think it's any of those, that's fine. You can pop in a different answer. And if you think it's two of them or all three of them, you can you can pop that in too. Nothing yet. Marios, I want you to answer. Oh, academic work, personal life, all three of them. All of them. Extracurricular. Somebody just left, that's right. First two, all of them. OK, so a nice little little range of answers. Does anyone think it's none of them at all? Amazing, thank you for your answers. Um, so they'll all hold different levels of importance to different people and that balance will vary from person to person and that's something that you'll discover as you go through your degree. So let's take a deeper look at some of these and what they might mean to you. Next slide please. The first of course is your academic work um, and it will be right up there at the top of the reasons why you're at university, the university you chose to go to and the subject that you're studying. Some of the things that will make up your academic work will be on the teaching side at least will be attending lectures, going to workshops, seminars, going into the labs, do practical work, um, also completing coursework. This is where you'll do a lot more of the independent work that Marius was talking about. And I'm begging you now, please, please, please do not leave it to the night before. If there's anything you take from today, let it be that. You don't have to listen to anything else I say, just understand that one. Um, another thing that will contribute to your grades is sitting exams um, and ultimately it's these three things that will that'll give you your decree classification at the end. So whether you get a first class, a second class, wherever it is. Um, academic work can also be stuff that you do in terms of work experience. Um, this, this of course will strengthen your CV. One of the major benefits of doing a life sciences degree is just how many options it gives you. You can do experience in labs that research anything and everything from cancer biology, genetic modification of crops, lab studying, neuroscience, drug discovery. You don't even have to go into a lab to do experience. You can go into the industry side of things, look at science in terms of business, in terms of marketing, in terms of application when it comes to pharmaceuticals or medicine. Again, the possibilities are almost endless. Next slide. The other major benefit of a life sciences degree is that it can take you all over the world. In my second year of my undergraduate, I was a research assistant for an organisation called Operation Wallacea that monitors and studies biodiversity and the protection of the natural habitat all over the globe. So I did studies on insects, birds, small mammals. I even got to monitor wild bears out in the Carpathians. So provided that COVID or another pandemic doesn't come in your way, um, if you have the opportunity and you know the capacity financially or otherwise to travel to study, um, take those opportunities if you can. 
Next slide. The next one is something that we picked up on earlier, so extracurricular activities. Um, this might be something that you're already doing, whether it's taking part in sports, playing for a team, if you're into media, things like journalism and content creating, or if you're doing volunteering work. Um, these are all things that you can continue doing at university, and there are lots of ways that you can get involved as well, whether it's through the sports union, the students union, um, even the school that you're in may have opportunities for you to get involved in things that aren't strictly academic. Um, and at least for me, extracurricular activities are incredibly important. The skills that you'll learn, whether it's giving presentations, public speaking, doing admin, event management, even things like working in policy making with your local council, these are all things that will give your CV a boost and set you apart from other candidates when it comes to applying for jobs or looking for postgraduate study opportunities like masters and PhDs. Um, and there always tends to be freebies at these extracurricular events. So collect all the pens, all the tote bags, eat all the pizza you can. Um, so even if you don't learn anything, at least you've gained something out of it. Uh, next slide, please. Something that I did uh, during my undergraduate degree was joining societies. Um, they're fantastic ways to meet new people, experience new cultures and take on roles of responsibility. Um, I was an event coordinator for my society and I put on a number of events for up to 400 people. 99% um, of universities, if they offer a life sciences degree, they'll have a life sciences society or something to that effect. So it's a great way to get to know your classmates um, and you can help each other with your academic work and then you can party in the evenings. Uh, next slide, please. The other thing that was really important to me that Marius mentioned um, was getting involved in student representation and student politics. This allows you to bring your voice forward um, and your fellow students voice forward to your school, to university management and put into place the sort of changes that you want to see. You'll have the opportunities to run campaigns, whether it's increasing awareness of recycling, being more eco friendly, um, campaigns on mental health awareness, de-stressing during exam periods with, you know, I've seen campaigns where there's been dogs on campus, there's been llamas on campus, all sorts of stuff. So again, the possibilities are absolutely endless. Next slide, please. The last thing I want to touch on is personal life. Um, some of you may be moving away from home for the first time. You'll be moving somewhere completely across the country, even somewhere around the world. And even just taking that step from reindeer at the Christmas party. Yeah, remember that one. <laughs> Even just taking that step from school to university, even if you're staying in the same city, can also be a massive feat. Some students will work part time alongside their studies to financially support themselves. Others will have care responsibilities or other personal circumstances, which mean they can't always put 100% of their attention on their academic work. But just remember, you're not alone. Chances are if you're struggling with something, someone else is as well, or they have or they will. And there are support systems in place to help you. So whether that's additional academic help there's something you're not quite getting your lecturers and your tutors are there to help and there'll be systems in place to help you with housing finances counseling and more so take care of your physical and your mental health because without them it's going to be much harder for you to get that degree next slide please so now going back to these three, over the last five minutes, your opinion on which is more important might have shifted a little bit, and it probably will shift as you go through your undergraduate from year to year. And as I said, it'll be different for each individual. There is no right answer. You've got to do what's best for you. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, so just before I finish, I wanted to leave you with some tips and things that I wish someone had told me when I started my undergraduate. Um, the first is be passionate about your subject. If you're not, I promise you, you'll be miserable. If you find six months in, a year, even two years in, that the degree that you've chosen isn't actually what you want to do, speak to your advisor. Um, they can help you with these decisions, whether it's switching to a different degree, whether you find that actually studying at university wasn't for you at all and you want to go and do an apprenticeship or go work full time instead. They can help you with these decisions and help you to find the best solutions for you to excel both academically and personally. Second, uh, find out what learning techniques work best for you. The way information is presented to you at undergraduate level is different to at school, so you'll want to take some time to figure out what works best for you. If you're a visual learner, if you learn best with a buddy, if you retain information better in the mornings than at 2 a.m. at night in the library, don't be doing that. So all these things will come to you in time as well. 
The third one, and I can't stress this one enough, in case I haven't made it clear, do the extracurricular activities. The job market is an absolutely brutal place and you really need those extra things to make you shine above the rest. It's all well graduating with a first class degree, but if you don't gain those extra skills along the way, employers are going to choose a candidate with a lower class degree, but has shown that they can do things like public speaking, they can multitask, they can work in a team, they can communicate well, they can, you know, balance books, all sorts of stuff. The fourth one, and I wish someone had, had told me this from day one, please don't be afraid to ask for help. You don't need to suffer in silence. I promise you someone somewhere in the university will be able to help you. Marios helped me. I was scared of him. I regret it. I should have just gone to him first. <laughs> and lastly, seize the day. Make the most out of every opportunity that comes your way. And if you find that there's something missing, why not start it yourself? Build a community with like minded students. Um, you know these years are going to be done before you realize it um, and there's nothing worse than having regrets so so take everything that comes your way um and that's that's me so thank you very much for your attention and if we have any questions uh, i'll take those at the end thanks guys Fantastic. Thank you both, Marios and Rumana. So I know we're technically over our time. I do have some slides to cover, um, which I'm happy to go through. But if people need to leave, if they've got other um, other things that they have to do, that's absolutely OK. So don't feel as if you need to go. The one thing I would uh, need to stay. Uh, the one thing I would say is it, there's a slide at the very end, but I'll say it now. There is a work experience um, opportunity open to anybody from Career Ready who would like to take it up. So we have a week of virtual uh, activities. Oh good, my cat's here just, just in time. Um, of virtual activities that will cover all sorts of stuff that you've heard today. Lots of really interesting research, lots of um, kind of guidance about getting into university. So if you're interested in that and you want to know more, um, get in touch with your career ready contact and they can put you in touch with me and I can tell you more. But it's a really, really good um, kind of expansion to what we're talking about here if you want to know more about uh, life sciences as a career. So um, I will very quickly go through my slides and hopefully we'll finish up in time. Oh, where are we going here? OK, hello, Kat. So uh, here's another Menti question for you. We'll do just do kind of 30 seconds on this. So which of the following careers do you think you could get if you took a life sciences degree? So we've got things like medical writer, researcher, tax advisor, secondary school teacher, doctor, product analyst, uh, journalist, banking consultant. So which of those do you think would be served by a life science degree? Got lots of people voting for researcher. That's certainly true. Lots for doctor, secondary school teacher, medical writer, absolutely. I like watching these little dots come out. They're quite cool. So I'll just give you another few seconds to, to put your votes in. Researchers definitely coming out top. So just to be a bit a bit uh, cheeky, uh, this was actually a trick question because all of these careers are represented by graduates from our life sciences degree. So we have people who have gone on to do the ones that you would expect, uh, teaching, research, medical writer, becoming doctors, but we also have people who have gone into tax advising, banking consultant, journalism, product analyst. Um, the nice thing about a life sciences degree is it doesn't just teach you to do science. It gives you skills that will be really applicable to lots of different careers and walks of life. So I used to do a program called STEM Ambassadors, um, which worked with people all across the STEM fields. And I had people from every single thing, um, from lawyers to accountants to medical practices saying we look for people with life sciences degrees because it teaches you how to do research. It teaches you to think critically. It teaches you to work in a team. Um, so just because you go and do a life sciences degree does not mean you automatically are funneled into you know, sitting at a, a lab bench doing research, you could do lots of different things. And I think that's a really exciting thing to know about doing life sciences. Um, so the thing that that, you know, came across there and is is in most people's mind is that you, you do lab work if you are, um, a, you know, do a life sciences degree. But actually I've taken from our staff 
uh, kind of uh, staff list, different roles that are not just sitting at a, a bench doing research. Um, so we have things like lab technicians. So these are the people who help keep the labs running. They they work with the equipment. They make sure that the researchers have what they need. They're really the the kind of the lifeblood of the life sciences complex. They they do so much important work to keep things running and are essential to researchers. Uh, we have lab managers who oversee the kind of um, big day, everyday decisions that happen within the lab. And again, they keep the labs running. They're really important. Uh, we have people who work in patents and contracts. So once you have developed something or you need to work with another company, or if you want to spin off and do something and make your own business, which we've had several people do within life sciences, you need somebody who knows the science, but also knows about the law behind it. Uh, people who work in press and communication. So we have a, uh, uh, several people who work in communications and it's really really important for those people to have a good background in science to know what they're talking about to know what they're putting out there is accurate so if you if you like talking to people if you like communicating with people but you also are passionate about science there are ways to bring those two together um, the same with public engagement and outreach so personally i really like science but i wasn't interested in dr drilling down to one particular type of science i wanted to know about all sorts so i get to learn about lots of different types and then tell people about them which is really exciting um, there's computational biologists programmers software developers so more and more life sciences research is using computer-based algorithms and computer-based programs to do the research so if you're passionate about computing you can bring those two together there are microscopy experts so people who work with the, the technical facilities to image and to show the work that's being done um, and it's a really specialized and really important field uh, vet, uh, the, we have a university vet who helps manage all of the animals that we use in our research um, and that's really essential to make sure they're well cared for, well looked after and, and well used by our researchers. We have people like Marius who have a background in, in research but have gone on to be lecturers and we also have trainers that bring people from all over the world into our labs and train them in new techniques, train them in new information. So if you like teaching, if you like working with people and telling them things, you can bring that with your life sciences and, and really have a really great career through that. Um, and we have health and safety officers who make sure we don't blow up the labs or injure anybody and they have to know their science backwards and forwards to be able to make sure we're doing it safely. Um, and our technical services are kind of the backbone of all the work we do. So they prepare all of the, the plates that are used, the chemicals, the reagents. They make sure that things are available when the researchers need them and uh, um, are incredibly important to what we do. So it's not just people sitting, or I say sitting, standing, walking, talking in a lab. Um, there's lots of people that go into supporting the research and they're all essential to what happens within our buildings. Um, so here's a little quiz for you. What skills are important, do you think? So this is based off of a survey I did uh, with uh, a lot of our scientists saying, what do you look for if you were hiring or, or trying to bring a coworker into your lab space? What, what skills would you want them to have? So uh, let me know what you think. What are the most important things for a scientist to have? I think I set this up so it should show, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Ah, oh, there we go, it is, it is gonna jump in. Everybody's distracted by kittens. Hello, Molly, now my dog is here. Everybody's joining in. Um, okay, this is really interesting. You guys, you weren't, you didn't fall for the trick question this time. Um, you were picking out things that are absolutely true. So. Most importantly, be beyond knowing the science, although that is obviously very important, but, but people said they look for people who can work in a team because science is not an individual pursuit. You have to be able to work with other people. You have to be, to be able to communicate with them. You have to be able to solve problems together. Um, and so all of these things, problem solving skills, teamwork, communication, and that's where things uh, that Romana spoke about. So working with societies and student groups and extracurriculars, those will help you develop those skills and those are really important to your employability and to, to being a good colleague and a good worker. Um, 
creativity is actually really high up there. Science is, is, is a very creative field. We often think that that's something you do in the arts and humanities, but you need to have a creative mind to come up with solutions to new problems. You need to be able to go, well, this isn't working. What can I do to solve this problem? So having that creative flair, being able to think outside the box is, is incredibly important for sciences. So it's not just being able to memorize things and, and recite formulas. It's about thinking on your feet, being creative, knowing what you're doing and being able to apply new solutions to it. Uh, we have another call at half 10, that's correct. So let me just jump to this. So our life science experience, uh, work experience week is coming up on July 26th through the 30th. So that's the last week in July. Um, I have put my email on the slide. You're welcome to send me an email or if you ask your career ready contact, they can put you in touch. But here's a, a very short, um, this is not, everything that we'll be doing, but you'll see that there's stuff about critical thinking. We'll be speaking to researchers. We'll be doing things about GMO crops, about animals and research, about machine learning. Um, and we have people from our learning and teaching um, who will be talking to us about, you know, more about coming into university, talking about personal statements. So it will be very, very useful if you're interested, not just in coming to Dundee, but to going and studying any life sciences degree to, to come along and, and to learn some more. So thank you very much. I know we've run on, but I really appreciate you all sticking around. And uh, if you have any other further questions, you can get in touch and we'd be very happy to speak to you all um, and and give you some guidance. So please do get, get in touch if you like. And thank you, Don. <laughs> I thank will you so much. Let you that go. was absolutely incredible. I know there's quite a lot to sort of pack in there into that kind of sort of restricted time frame but that was amazing and we will share the final slide with all the information for the work experience we'll make sure that the career ready team actually send that out to you all um, and any questions that you still have pop them in the chat we'll make sure that we get those over to the team um, you know and hopefully you'll be able to answer them following the sessions today but of, I'm just mindful of the fact that we do have the other session that's starting very, very soon. And it might be that we we have actually got some of the new guests that have already joined us now. So for those of you that were on the first session, thank you so much. Um, we'll, we'll have a quick break and then we'll start shortly. Thanks so much. I'm going to go grab another coffee. <laughs> Absolutely. Get that caffeine in you. Um, and we'll be I'll be very quick about the intro slides. I think I think that might have been uh, a part that took us a bit longer than it should have. So I'll rush through those and then we can hopefully have a bit more flexibility with getting questions. Yeah, that would be great, Erin. Thank you. I will make sure that any questions that come through, I think I think possibly a lot of people that were on the chat today will be really interested in that week. Um, so I'll, I will make sure that we do share that. Fabulous. I can send you a little a little blurb or, or you know yeah. some more details. Um, and I have a a link to a um, form that they can fill out. Um, so I'll send that on, and you can circulate that. And um, yeah, I'm happy to chat with anybody who has more questions. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.